Hi, my name is James, and today we're going to be talking about the SBAR communication tool. This is a really helpful communication tool that was initially developed in the military and has been adopted by many healthcare settings. This is because it's a fantastic structure to be able to talk to other health professionals about acutely ill patients or if there's a critical time period in which to get certain information across so we can talk to each other in a structure that both sides recognise. SBAR stands for Situation, Background, Assessment and Recommendation. And through this video, I'll go through each of those four sections and then we'll put it together in an example so you can see how it works in practice. There are a few key points in using SBAR that will help you maximise this as an excellent communication tool. Firstly, make sure that you have all the patient information that you need in front of you. This may include blood results, x-rays, ECGs, past medical history. You may also find it useful to have a piece of paper and jot down the key headings for SBAR to help you allocate the information into the right part of that communication tool. Secondly, using this structure can help you stay calm, especially if you're in a stressful situation or you're concerned about how you're going to talk to the person on the other end of the phone, who may also be stressed or very busy. Let's start with S for situation. I'm going to start by explaining who I am, who the patient is and why I'm calling. For my information, I'm going to say my name, the grade that I am, and the area that I'm working, whether that's the department or the hospital, whatever's most relevant. For the patient, I'll give their name and age. It all helps put everything into context. And then I'm going to finish this section with a very brief summary, maybe only one sentence to explain specifically about this patient and why I'm calling this particular person. For example, this is a lady with a fractured neck of femur. It makes it clear why I'm talking to them, but there's no other detail at this stage yet. Let's move on to B. This is background. All this is doing is providing context for this specific referral. This does not mean going through the full history, the full clerking for this individual patient, but picking out the key bits that will make sense for the person that you're talking to. This may be past medical history. It may include drug history but only do that if it's relevant rather than listing off a load of medication that may not be interesting or pertinent to the person you're talking to. For example, if someone needed surgery and they were anticoagulated, it's going to be really important for the surgeon you're referring to to understand that. Another example, maybe if you're talking to the microbiologist about advice for which antibiotic to use, they're clearly going to want to know if the patient is allergic to anything. This section will also include their current management and the patient's response. Depending on what's going on, that may summarise the past few hours or possibly the past few days or possibly even longer. One of the key aspects of this section is to think in the mind of the person you're talking to. What's the key information that they need at this moment in time? They can always ask you more questions if they need more information about the patient. Let's move on to A for assessment. This typically includes vital signs, key positive findings, and important negative findings in your clinical examination. As an example, if I had a patient who I thought had appendicitis, I might say they have a raised pulse at 120, a pyrexia at 38.2, the rest of their vital signs are normal. On examination of their abdomen, they have rebound tenderness in the right iliac fossa. Finally, let's move on to R for recommendation. This is where I'm going to give my working diagnosis and suggest what I feel I want from the person that I'm talking to. For example, I may say this person has an intracranial hemorrhage and they're deteriorating rapidly. I'd appreciate you coming down for your assessment and review of the patient in the next five minutes. What this enables us to do is to clarify the expectations we have from this phone call. And it means the person that we're talking to can then prioritise appropriately. If you don't have any thoughts for a diagnosis, just be honest about that in your referral. So SBAR is a really flexible, adaptable tool that can be used in a number of situations. Here's an example of it being used in practice. Hi, it's James here, consultant in the emergency department. Who am I talking to, please? Oh, hello, it's Chris, the orthopaedic registrar on call. Oh, hi, I'm calling about Jane Doe. She's had a fall today and sustained a right-sided fractured neck of femur. Okay. So the story is she was at home, uh, she tripped over a rug and fell onto her right-hand side. She didn't have any chest pain or shortness of breath or dizziness before she fell. 
and uh, she hasn't complained of any other injury. She has got a background of arthritis in both hips and she is awaiting a right-sided hip replacement. Okay. She's got a new score of 2 with saturations at 94% and a pulse of 92. She's got a shortened externally rotated right leg that would fit with a fractured neck of femur and that was confirmed on x-ray. She hasn't got any other significant injury. So I was expecting her to be admitted under the care of orthopaedics if that's all right. That's not a problem. Can I ask what uh, analgesia has she had? Oh yes, she's uh, just getting a fascia aliaca block at the moment. Brilliant, thank you. I can come and review her shortly. Brilliant. Do you know how long you'll be? I'm just reviewing a patient on the ward. I should be down in 15 minutes or so. Okay, so you'll accept the patient and you'll come and review in about a quarter of an hour? Yes, that's not a problem. Brilliant, thank you.